Well, welcome back, everybody, to Season 2. This is the second show of Season 2 of CobraRadio.com. I'm on my own tonight. And it looks like guys will be arriving late again. Let me put my headphones on so I can hear what I sound like. Cause God knows I love the sound of my own voice. All right. Hey, that's not too bad. Well, let's see. What do we got for you today? It is January the 18th. It's Martin Luther King Jr. Day. And uh, I'd like to remind everyone that I think Dr. King was a, actually a great man. And uh, try not to look into the shortcomings of every human life because God knows we all have our shortcomings. We all have our faults. Uh, try and understand what the guy stood for. I can't imagine anything in what Dr. King spoke about that we would find negative. The only thing that concerns me is that so much of what Dr. King was talking about seems to have gone out the window, both within the American political scene and, I think, to a large extent, among the leaders of the, uh, of the civil rights community. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, just, I wonder how Dr. King would react to the issues of today. Let's start with a Jewish proverb. You know, I love my Jewish Proverbs. A lot of people don't realize it, but uh, the beginning of the Reform, uh, the beginning of Reform Judaism began right here in uh, Charleston, South Carolina, with the beginning of uh, Jewish services in the vernacular. And if you don't know what vernacular means, it means the language of the people who live there. And so, um, let me let me give you this um, this thing. The world is but a narrow bridge. The main thing is not to fear. And along with that, we're all going to start adding a little southernism into it. it. Kind of goes along the same path. When you worry about small things, you give them a big shadow. Hey, I think someone just arrived. I bet you it's Lance Morrison. We're going to do a whole segment. We're going to give him a whole segment to himself tonight. Before we do, i got a joke for you. Uh, it kind of goes like this. Um, my cousin was down from up north. Uh, come on down to see family here in the south. Them, the family thought they'd take him to church so you see what a, what, a, what a good church service is like. Nothing like a good old fashioned camp meeting or church service in the south. So they brought him with him to church and the pastor's up there and he's looking, he's a fine looking fellow you know, but he's from way up north and the preacher gives a good sermon and when the, everything service is over the preacher steps outside Hey Lance, come on have a seat it's you and me right now uh, so the uh, minister steps outside, like a good minister does, to shake the hands of his congregation as they come out. And as we come out, they take a look at my cousin, my Yankee cousin from up north. He's got two black eyes. Didn't happen when he went in. He's got them coming out. And the minister says, good heavens, man. How in the world did you manage to get a black eyes uh, in the middle of a church service? And, and my cousin said, well, Reverend, here's the thing. When we all stood up during the, during the services. The woman in front of me... Well, I noticed her dress somehow got wedged up in there. And being a good Christian fella, I thought I'd do the right thing. Your sermon moved me, so I'd do the right thing. So I gave a little tug on that dress and pulled it on out of there for her. You should turn right around and punch me right in the eye. I got to tell you, Reverend, that hurt. That woman could, that woman could deliver. She brought that from downtown. And the, and the Reverend says, well, okay, that explains that one black eye, but how'd you get two? He says, well, I saw how upset she was. I thought I'd tuck it back in for her. <laughs> You make that one? <laughs> I love that one. He must have been a southern gentleman. He, well, he was trying to learn to be a southern gentleman. Everybody, say hello to Lance Morrison. Hey, Lance, say hello to everybody. Hey, how's it going, everybody? We have no show written tonight. I decided to tell you because I thought everybody else had something they wanted to do. We're going to have a segment just for Lance. Uh, so that'll be segment three. It'll be for Lance. And uh, unfortunately, no one's here. <laughs> And I'm going, oh, great. The well, one time I don't sit there, I've got this reams of outline ready to go. No one shows up. Well, when you say we're going to shoot from the hip, you know, maybe this is, this is their version. They're, shooting from, they're, gonna, they're just going to shoot later. That's right. Well, this, it's not like we don't have a lot to talk about. I even got this thing here. I'm not, I'm not entirely certain your, your bride didn't send this to me. It's based, no, no, she didn't, but it's based upon computers and it's based upon the old Abbott and Costello who's on first routine. We might read that off today. So, Lance, how you been? How are your holidays? Okay, okay. You know, had the whole family dynamic thing going on. You know, you lead up to the holidays and everybody's kind of on pins and needles and everything else. And so, I'm personally glad when they're over. It's just, it's just the drama. I mean, it's unbelievable that I'm not in the drama. 
on the face of it, but yeah, it went, it went okay. I didn't get anything because, you know, technically I'm unemployed. How unfortunate. Yeah, I... I <laughs> Oh, we're talking about Christmas presents. I didn't get any gifts either. Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, so that was not, you know, we, we actually, this is, this is how you know you're an old married couple. Now, my wife and I got carpeting for the house. And Merry that's, Christmas. That's exciting. <laughs> we, we laid some carpet in two bedrooms, and I've been painting. I'm doing a lot of painting, doing my part as the, uh, the good husband that I am. So yeah, it's been a big, uh, big year for me. Oh God, painting! Yeah. Women love painting. I, I know. I'm a regular Picasso. Man, I tell you, I can cut in with a brush now like nobody's business. I don't want to brag, but if you came to my house and watched me, you'd probably just give up. You'd you know, I saw a wonderful. It it's actually involves Rosie O'Donnell. She, you know, sometimes she does some really brilliant things. And there was a movie she was in with Dan Aykroyd of all people to go to some kind of a. An island where uh, where this everybody's promiscuous. This is you, know, you go there and everybody's have, just having you know s promiscuous sex, except for her and Dan Aykroyd. And uh, this this really incredible looking hunk, this Fabio type guy, is trying to turn her on. And she goes, "You want to turn me on?" He goes, "Yes." She says, "Paint my house." <laughs> 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 I thought, what a great line, and Rosie O'Donnell true. delivered it beautifully. I don't care about her politics on that one. When you're good, you're good. Well, how was your holiday? My holiday was just fine, just fine. Uh, my this was my Christmas of the dog. Uh, my daughter was off uh, visiting uh, in-laws and wanted to take uh, my son, take her brother Drew, to Universal Studios as his Christmas gift. And so, but someone needed to watch your dog Hugo. Which, if you go and you check out Percy's site, you'll see Hugo. That that damnation dog, that's Hugo. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, I spent about ten days taking care of a dog over the Christmas holidays. So needless to say, that's pretty much all I did. But you know what? I really do love the Christmas holidays. I just love them. But I also, when it's over, it's over. And I can't do that. All right, tree out of here. Get out of the bag and get these stupid needles up on the carpet. I'm ready to have my house back. But the whole period leading up to it is really wonderful. I enjoy that a lot. Well, we're going to have to go out and come back in just a minute. We want to welcome everybody back to our second season, second show of CobertRadio.com. This is our 31st uh, episode. And we'll be right back with CobertRadio.com.